Reptile keeping is a lot of fun. That's why we do it. But sometimes you kind of lose your passion a little bit. So today, let's go over the top five ways you can make reptile keeping more fun. My name's Adam, this is Diamond. You're watching Wiccan's Wicked Reptiles. Stick around. With almost any hobby, you're gonna lose a little bit of your fire, a little bit of steam, no matter what it is. But with animals, you can't really do that because they're living beings. So sometimes you have to spice it up a bit. So let's go over how to do that exactly. Starting off with number five, feed new items in new ways. And this might seem silly or, you know, obvious, but I bet you, you might not have done these things. Something as simple as finding a new feeder for your bearded dragon, for example. Ow, he's spiky there. If you always feed crickets and certain types of worms, why don't you try feeding dubia roaches? If you always feed dubia roaches, try feeding crickets. Try feeding black soldier fly larvae. That is something that I recently did and I didn't even know this was an option. And the only reason I did is because my friends at Grub Terra reached out to me and sent me some. And you can get some too. There's a link below and a 10% discount code ships right to your door. My idea here is just, kind of change it up. And even if you're already kind of changing up the diet and that isn't enough or you want to do even more, another way you can do it is just make it more challenging for them to eat. Kind of the same way that you'd feed like a dog and a Kong, which is something that I do with one of my dogs, right? You can do the same thing. Buy these toys at the dollar store. This is a great example here of Professor Herp doing it with his Ackies, throwing kind of insects inside of this toy and they kind of have to problem solve in order to get at their food. It's kind of a motivating thing. It adds some stimulation, adds some enrichment. They gotta eat anyway. Why not make it more fun for them? And this video is all about you, how to make it more fun for you. And the reason this is more fun for you is because it's fun to watch them eat. It's so freaking fun, especially if they're kind of challenged and they're not, you know, doing the same thing you see day in, day out. I remember the first time I dropped a plum into the enclosure for my tortoises and both of them, I've never seen tortoises move so, I think both of them broke their necks a little bit. They like, it was so fast, the reaction that they had and they, you know, kind of ran over as fast as tortoises can run and they started eating the thing. And it was fun because like, I didn't cut it up or anything. It gave them the challenge of how to get it off of the pit. No, they're not gonna swallow the pit or die, come on now. Just before we move on to the next point, why not grow your own food if you're able to? I, well, you're gonna see in a few weeks, I'm making a really cool outside uh, tortoise enclosure and I'm gonna have a garden around it that I can just kind of pick the food and throw it in there for them. Swiss chard and collard greens and things like that. And you could do that too. It doesn't even have to be like right next to them. But you could, you could do that as well. Or if you have a garden that has, you know, Swiss chard on this side, collard greens on this side, whatever, let them roam through if it's safe, right? You're not using any pesticides or anything like that or fertilizers. Let them roam through your garden and pick for themselves. Let them choose, give them options. That's always really fun as well. I think I've beat this point to death. Let's move on. Number four, and something that I'm sure most of you have thought of, rearrange the enclosure or upgrade the enclosure or make your own enclosure for your animals. I know I do this all the time. Anytime I have to change the substrate or if I have to like really do a big deep clean of all the furnishings inside of an enclosure, I never put it back the same way. Because the animal, if they are stimulated in a new environment, which it is for them, they're gonna be more active. So it's more fun for you to watch. And at the end of the day, this list could just be broken down into interacting with your animal and watching your animal in various ways. Because those are the only ways that you really interact with your animal. Because if you think about it, keeping reptiles is all for you. You're not doing it for them, you're doing it for you. You want a pet, you're giving them the best life possible and in a roundabout way, they have a better life because of you, because there's no predators and perfect conditioning and it's just much better. It's like kind of like Club Med, what you're giving them in comparison. But if you change their enclosure around, it's just more fun for them as well because they get to explore new areas, new designs, things like that. And making your own custom enclosures, own custom backgrounds, giving them climbing opportunities, this is a great way not only for them to feel stimulated, but for you. Because you just made something or rearranged something. It doesn't even have to be something you made, but you just kind of crafted, you scaped their enclosure. It's something that you did and you get to watch them enjoy it. 
you did something great for your animal and now you get the benefit as well by seeing how happy they are. And just a side point on this main point, you could make an enclosure a kind of centerpiece in a room. A lot of people do this with aquariums, for example. You could make something a big bioactive enclosure and kind of have it set in your sitting room, your sunroom, whatever, in order to kind of captivate you like as if it was a television. Nowadays, everyone has a TV and that is the main focal point of their living room. What if instead you had a really cool bioactive enclosure or it doesn't even have to be bioactive with a really cool reptile that is super active? I think that's pretty cool as well. That's why I have this giant turtle tank in my living room as well. Number three, and something I can almost guarantee you didn't think about or even think was possible, take a break. Now, I'm not gonna be one of these guys that, oh, you should just go on a vacation, you know, and uh, have someone come in and like, I know that's not an option for most people. Most of us work, we can't just take off if we want to, we can't just stop, you know, giving our animals attention and pay someone or have someone come in to take a break. But if you have the option, to, even if it's for a few days, go away for a weekend and have someone come and check up on your reptiles, your brother, your sister, your mom, your dad, some guy off Kijiji, the guy at the reptile store who's looking for extra hours, whatever. Just think about the opportunity to take a break because if you have several reptiles, it does feel like a job sometimes. When I have to clean this room and it's like a deep clean, it feels like a job because I'm in here for eight hours working. So if you can take a break for a few days and just kind of leave, you're gonna miss your animals while you're gone. And when you come back, you'll have a rejuvenated sense of that passion, that fire, that kind of got you into this in the first place. I don't wanna spend a ton of time on this because I know that only some of us have the opportunity to do this, you know? And, and you see this all the time. Well, what I do when I'm stressed and it's some like millionaire and they, you know, I go on my yacht and my private, and the people feed me grapes and I know most of us can't do that, including me most of the time. So if you have the opportunity, take a break for a couple days, a week, whatever. As long as your reptiles are being taken care of while you're gone, you're gonna feel awesome coming back. Number two, and one of my favorite things to do this time of year, take your animals outside where and when it's safe. So don't take them to a park and there's, you know, like don't take your reticulated python to a park with a bunch of kids. You're going to stir up some crap, you know? Someone's gonna get upset. So, no, people don't understand, like us, that snakes are these beautiful creatures. A lot of people, you know, the only good snake is a dead snake. You know, dumb people say that, right? So I, I feel like maybe not taking it to a public park, but if you have a backyard or if you know a place that is safe and secure and not populated, take an animal out there if it's safe and have them roam around in the grass or on the patio or, or whatever. And even give them the opportunity if you have a backyard that you know has not been treated with pesticides or fertilizers or anything like that, and you have a bearded dragon or a, a tortoise or whatever, let them go outside and eat the dandelions. It's completely safe. That's what they eat. You go to the store and buy dandelion greens, you have them in your backyard. Let them eat them. I love doing this. I have a yard, I'm very lucky to have a yard, and I let my tortoises just kind of roam around. And I think to piggyback on top of this, and it kind of goes with number four, make an outside enclosure. If you have the opportunity and you live in a place where you can do that, I live in Southern Ontario, Canada. It is hot, it is humid, it is crazy here in the summer. It's very similar to a jeweled Lacerda environment or uh, a red foot tortoise environment, which is why this weekend I'm gonna be building a red foot tortoise enclosure that's literally attached to my house. Sure, it's made of wood and I could probably buy several vehicles for the cost, but at the end of the day, I like the opportunity to give animals the benefit of having natural UVB. It's the best. And if you're wondering, well, how does this benefit me. Watching animals outside is a lot more fun. You have like this natural light, it's absolutely beautiful. You give them the opportunity to feel stimulated, they'll be more active a lot of the time. If you take an animal from UVB like this, where it's literally from a bulb that was made by a human, and then you give them the opportunity to go out in the sun, most of the time, at least in my experience, you'll see a different type of reaction, a different type of uh, behavior from them. Diamond gets super dark, he's soaking up the rays. I just really like it, super active, my tortoises are roaming around. I think I'm just kind of beating this one to death like a dead horse. Take your animals outside, I promise you, you'll really enjoy it. And number one, most fun way to have fun with your reptiles, fun, 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 say fun another time, passive handling. Well, any handling really is fun. Like last week, you guys watched me wrangle Kratos, the big Burmese python. That was not passive in any sense of the word. 
and it was still fun, but my favorite thing is to take out a Dumerals Boa, or to take out a Spotted Python, or a Ball Python, or Diamond is the best example, as you see him sitting here doing nothing, and just have him when you watch a movie, if you're editing a video, editing pictures, you know, you're talking on the Discord channel, which, by the way, there's a link in the description below, stuff like that, uh, you know, just not really doing much, and you just have them as a companion. I do this a lot during streams, right? I do those once a month or when I'm editing videos, a lot of the time Diamond will just sit on my shoulder for the entire time. I'll be sat at a desk for like eight hours and he won't move. And it's just kind of fun. It's enrichment for him. You know, he's not in the same place. He's doing different things. If you have snakes, they're wandering around or leopard geckos wandering on the keyboard. I think it's kind of enriching for them and it's fun for you because you're doing you're getting something out of the way that you have to be doing anyway or you're just relaxing watching a movie whatever and you have your animal with you i personally love this this is my favorite way to have fun with my reptiles and it doesn't have to be passive if you like wrangling 20 foot pythons and it's like a workout and you're out of breath after well do that instead i mean i think there's a best of both worlds there so if you couldn't tell, this was top five ways to make it more fun for you, but also for your reptiles. Because at the end of the day, if they're having fun, you're having fun. And if you're having fun, hopefully they're having fun too. Be a good person to your reptiles. So there you go. What do you think of the list? What do you do? I want to know in the comment section. Drop it down there. What do you do to have more fun with your reptiles? I would love to know. And as always, a special thank you to the Patreon supporters. It was actually one of the Patreon supporters that gave me this idea. Patreon of the week, we're doing that now. Cat and Rick, and I saw pictures of one of your animals outside, and it was like very well done, like these almost professional looking photographs. And it gave me the idea to do this video because I take my reptiles outside too. So for as little as $1 a month, you can be a Patreon supporter, get discounts on the merch, videos early, extra videos, things like that. And uh, do I have anything else to plug? I don't think so. So because I do video twice a week, that means after you hit like and subscribe, please do that. Appreciate it. I'll give you, okay, you did it? Great. I'll see you on Monday or Thursday. What day is it?